Welcome back to another how-to video. Today we're looking at the first of a three-part series where we're going to talk about the vehicle dynamics that racers and drivers need to know. You don't need to be a race engineer to understand this stuff, but it will allow you to break down what you're trying to achieve when you're driving your car on the limit on track. And part one is looking at the friction circle. My name is David Pittard, I'm a Nürburgring champion, international racing driver and driver coach with over 20 years experience in the motorsport industry, as well as all round petrol head. Today's video is a continuation of the How To Motorsport series. In previous videos we've looked at vision and how to learn a track as quickly and as efficiently as you can. So make sure you stay subscribed to the channel for plenty more videos like this to come. Today we will look at understanding grip and how it is used to optimise performance driving on track. Let's run through the things of what you need to know about grip. Firstly, let's define a few things. An acceleration is described as a force required to change the path or direction of a body. Grip is the countering force that opposes centrifugal forces and acceleration forces that come from your car from cornering, braking and accelerating. A tyre only has a finite amount of grip to oppose these forces and can be applied in two directions, longitudinally, so accelerating and braking, and laterally, cornering left and right. And they can be combined as well, in a, and they're defined on the axis as positive and negative, which we'll look into in a second. Generally, grip is measured in Gs. G-forces is a value of how many times the force of gravity is being applied at that moment. The maximum grip a tyre can give depends on a number of factors. This comes down to the coefficient of grip of the tyre, so the material, how much heat it has and the size it has. The track surface grip coefficient, is it an abrasive track, is it a smooth track, is the track wet as well. The normal force, so how much weight the car is actually pushing into the ground and the variable to that is the mass of the car, how heavy it is, uh, the weight transfer of the car, how much load is being applied to uh, the outside tyres or, or the braking tyres for example and if there's downforce or lift applicable to the car as well. And the best way to show and represent all this is the friction circle or the grip circle or a GG graph. So that's what we're going to look at now. So let's look at the friction circle or grip circle or GG graph. It is a positive and ne negative axis with the longitudinal forces accelerating and braking being displayed on the vertical axis with deceleration being positive and acceleration being negative. And then we have the lateral forces which are applied left and right on the horizontal axis with left being negative and right being positive. The reason it isn't possible to plot outside of this circle is that within the circle that is how much resisting force the tyre has. Yes, you can apply ex more acceleration than the graph shows in a cornering force or a, a braking force for example, however that acceleration force means it uh, won't, won't be as large as the force you're applying outside of the circle, meaning that there'll be a difference in what the tyre is resisting and what the acceleration is being applied. Therefore, there'll be a movement as a result. There's an imbalance of forces. And in minor applications, this means that, for example, the front um, tyres you overload, that means that the uh, radius of the corner you're trying to take isn't possible at the speed you're trying to take it which will result in a small correction but then in major situations it can lead to a, lose of a loss of grip, a loss of traction and therefore a spin. And a worked example of this trade-off of accelerating in the longitudinal direction and lateral direction can be seen here with a still a maximum value, maximum combined value of 1 on the outside of the circle we can combine a 0.6 amount of positive longitudinal acceleration and a 0.8 negative of lateral acceleration so we're braking and turning left and that's going to put us on our maximum value on the outside of the graph at 1 still. It does highlight that if we're turning at negative 0.8 g we can't use the full amount of the circle for 1g for turning because some of that tyre's grip is being used to slow the car down also. An example of this GG graph in action is, is shown in any of my V-Box onboard footage. You can see the little uh, round dot with the red circle in the middle and the red circle is that combined g-force which where it's being applied and it moves obviously forward in braking, backwards in accelerating and then side to side under cornering as well. 
And this red dot is the force that the driver feels when he is driving. That is the bum in seat feeling that drivers describe when, when they're feeling what the car is doing and how close it is to the limit. And it's a race driver's job to uh, make that little red dot be on the outside of the friction circle, the grip circle, for as long as possible. That will lead to higher average cornering speeds and therefore a higher average lap, uh, lap speed and a lower lap time. So that's the theory of the friction circle, the grip circle, the GG graph. However, where does, how does this apply to each part of a corner? So we're going to break down a very basic corner here and look at the different stages of that corner. First of all, we have our standard GG graph with the, the dot right, the value right in the middle. That shows that the car is neither accelerating or decelerating longitudinally and it's going in a straight line, it's not turning left or right. So that's why the, the, there's no uh, force acting on the car at all, that's why the dot is in the middle. Then we come to heavy braking. The dot is now going to shoot to the top of the graph at 1, which will be our braking. So the car is optimising its braking, it's using all of the grip available from the tyre in a straight line. Because it's using all of the optimal um, grip available in a straight line, it's not possible to turn the car at that point without braking traction. The next phase of the corner is turning. This is where things start to get a little bit tricky. There's a small amount of combined now as we have to transfer from fully at the top of the graph all the way into the right hand side of the graph to make the corner. So a good driver will follow the edge of the friction circle all the way around the edge until his the, the grip is fully transferred into full cornering. Then in the middle of the corner, that is where we get to our full load in the, in the corner. So we're at the maximum turning force, but we can't accelerate the car or decelerate the car without braking traction at this point because all of the grip is used to hold the car uh, turning at its maximum value. After the apex, we then have the combination of accelerating out of the corner. Now we follow the opposite side of the friction graph where the forces are now transferred from full turning to full acceleration. And then once we've come out of the corner, finished our turning, we're in a straight line, we're now just using full acceleration. That's now the dot is at the bottom of the graph. I explored ways in which to explore these limits in my previous video on how to learn a circuit. So make sure you check out that video for more detail on how to learn to use those systems and learn where the maximum grip is. So going back to the friction circle now, what separates a good driver from an amateur driver? And the ability of a fast driver or a good driver is, as mentioned earlier on, to maximise that friction circle as much as possible. So in all phases of the circuit, he's as close to that edge of the circle in all parts of the corner and all parts of the circuit. And where that really stands out, I believe, is in the combination of turning and braking on the way into a corner and the accelerating and turning on the way out of a corner. From the countless hours that I've done coaching on circuit, that is where people, the biggest difference between a pro and an amateur driver is. Friction circle application to a corner can be further understood when we talk about weight transfer and also a tyre's characteristics. So please make sure you check out my part two and part three videos which will be uploaded soon and make sure you subscribe for plenty more content like this to come. As mentioned, these ideas of physics and vehicle dynamics can be applied both in the real world and virtually and give you an idea as a driver what you're trying to achieve when you're trying to optimise your cornering as much as possible and how you can use that extra information to analyse how you can further improve your driving on track. If you're interested in learning more about vehicle dynamics and the physics behind making you faster on the circuit, then head to my website and make sure you book a co coaching session with me, be that in the real world on a track day or in the virtual world as well. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please make sure you give it a like if you found it useful and drop any questions you have in the comments down below. In the meantime, whilst you're on the channel, please make sure you check out this classic on board down here and check out my previous video on how to learn a circuit and stay subscribed up here. Until next time, bis dann.